Welcome back. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, I don't really believe that John boy when uh, he goes on about all these Australians and all these shoes. Well, here's your proof for you. Middle of nowhere, flip flops on the tree. Hi there, uh, if you're new here, I'm Jess, that's John. He's the one with the totally weird obsession with flip flops. <laughs> you didn't believe me, did you? You didn't believe me, but I found all the shoes. It's been doing my head in this whole trip about those bloody shoes. Should have seen him, it was like a kid in a candy shop when he saw the flip-flop Christmas tree. Um, but we left Albany today and we're on our way to Brevet Bay. Um, and we're really excited because we think we found a beach we're allowed to camp on overnight. So cross your fingers for us. We'll either have a great beach camp or we'll get booked. What kind of vehicle is this road say it's for, John? Four wheel drives only. And what have we got? Two wheel yeah, drive only. Right. And uh, what are we going to do? Give it a go. <laughs> oh, we did it. Woo! We're on. <laughs> the drive is working though, eh? Are you? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, that was a perfect little stop and refresh on our way into Bremer. So um, I think we'll go check out what the town's got in store and then for the big beach camp up. Too easy, eh? Well, I've just had a word with her and she reckons she now identifies as a four-wheel drive. So, we've gone to check out the access point for this from the other side of the river. We couldn't see a lot. We ummed and ahed for half an hour, uh, tried to find some information about it. No one goes there. There's, uh, there's two reviews on wiki camps and one blog. That's it. So we're going in blind. Give it a go, eh? Give it a go. So I love a red dirt road. However, they pretty much always come with corrugations. And corrugations will rattle your van to pieces. So John's having to let the tires down in your love. Yeah. Yeah, they reckon um, go down to about. I'm going to go down to about 30 psi now, but then when we get to the the beach, we're going to have to go down a little bit more. So, yeah, see how it goes. Sweet relief. We're going to stop and check this beach out, John. It's happened. It was going so well, John. <laughs> uh, rookies. Come on, big girl. Go, 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 at the river mouth of the beach. <laughs> She's a bit harder here, but we've had a bit of carnage on the way down. So the cushions have come off, toilet seats down, undies all over the floor, kitchen rolls taking a battering. She's a mess. Well, we're all going to get stuck at some point, aren't we? But uh, I've never done forward driving before or anything like that. And thinking about it now, maybe I should have gone forward instead of backwards. But uh, that's the 
We're just winging it, aren't we? So maybe I'll do a bit of YouTube research. But uh, I end up having to let the tyres down to about 10 PSI. So hopefully the old compressor works in the morning to get them back up. But yeah, what a beautiful spot anyway. And uh, well, luckily enough, it was like this, eh? Because oh. that journey down there, I thought, if we get here and we can't stay here, it's going to be a nightmare. It's definitely the worst road I've ever driven oh, on. Oh, horrendous. But uh, all I kept thinking was, like, the poor old suspension was screaming its head off all the way down. But, yeah. yeah. So we're going to eat some dinner and uh, hit the hay, hey, love? Yeah, see you see in the morning. The morning. Good morning. Well, that was our first free camp on a beach we've ever had, and hopefully it won't be the last, anyway. Yeah. Just as long as there's no bogging involved. <laughs> it was brilliant. Although, I woke up at like <laughs> one o'clock in the morning, leapt out of bed because I've been having a nightmare that we were like flooded and we we're getting floating away. Yeah, it doesn't help that all, all the stuff, I mean, it's good that they do it, but they show plaques with cars that are sunk, because obviously a lot of people go on the beaches and uh, it'll get real soft and, yeah, like we were yesterday, but a bit worse, I suppose. Yeah. So, I leapt out of bed. John, John, we're in the water. We went. We were totally fine. So, um, yeah. But other than that, it was a lovely night, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're just going to have a little walk along the beach now. Nice little steady, slow morning. And um, then we'll get on our way to Esperance. And down the rattly road. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd get stuck there, eh, boy? I don't know, some amateurs. <laughs> So we're back on the old gravel road and it reckons we've got 42 minutes of it. But uh, the way we go, I reckon it'll be about an hour and a half. Show you behind the scenes photo shoot for YouTube. We are not professional photographers. <laughs> Don't have to use butts, use butts. to tarmac i think the way out was definitely worse than the way in uh, now we've got air back up and um if anyone didn't see my build i got this little compressor and it's a brilliant little um compressor actually it was only uh, i think it was 100 bucks wasn't it yeah 120 From i think drive super center but um but all i've done is i've got this massive long lead which will reach all the way around the van <laughs> And then I've just hooked me up onto a little Anderson plug and a resettable fuse in there. So, yeah, it's a brilliant little kit and it inflates real quick, so I'm well impressed with that. She's back together. What, a, what an experience that was. <laughs> Never again. Yeah, I mean, I'm, we, I'm stoked we did it. Yeah. But that's definitely the worst road we've ever been on. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't do it again. No, even the bloke in the four wheel drive, like when we got bogged yesterday, he was just watching us like, and he kept looking, kept looking, and then he went to come over when there was Max tracks and we got out finally. But uh, we spoke to him this morning and he was like, I don't even want to go back down that road. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not just us anyway. No. But she's all in one piece. John gave her a good check over. Yeah. And, uh, and she's she's survived. She's hardcore, I'll be Yeah, we only got one casualty. The water, uh, water can on the roof is leaking a little bit. So, I don't know if that's coming from a little seal or something. Or, it's or whether it's or... coming out the overflow valve. Maybe. I don't know, but at least it's not a diesel can anyway, because that would have made a bit of a mess. But... And been expensive. Yeah, so, <laughs> off to Esperance. Google Maps has just tried to send us down this road. And Jess was like, Nah. <laughs> we'll go the longer way. <laughs> I've uh, just been driving along and everywhere I can see it looks like there's fires everywhere and then I've suddenly just got to this bit and it's just unbelievable like there's obviously a bushfire gone through 
real recent because it still smells of uh, fire and I've just put a drone up and just as far as your eye can see there's been a fire and I've seen a few uh, amp uh, fire engines go by as well like with the lights going just nice and slow so I think they're still looking for fires that are ongoing and like I say with the smoke that's going I think there's little bits that are sort of simmering down so but yeah I've never seen anything this this big for a bushfire before anyways but yeah horrendous. So that uh, recording I just did then was obviously at the beginning of the fire because just the further and further I got along, it just got worse and worse and it got to the stage where literally everything was still on fire. It was unbelievable. I don't know if you can see it in the clips, but it was literally like still flames coming out of the tree trunk. And it was so hot, wasn't it? The heat radiating from the side of the road it was terrifying. So uh, the, all the electrical uh, poles go through there and it looks like they've replaced them but like the old ones are still just on the side just smoldering away and I suppose they can't they haven't got to worry about putting it out because everything's dead there but then the other side of the the road it's is like all brand fire. new bush sort of yeah. thing so that's why they've got the fire crews literally just constantly cruising up and down the road and the police looking for anything that like really sparks up again yeah just one wind change direction and it's, it's go again it's all go so I had a little look as well and it said that it started on Tuesday, today's Friday to give you some perspective on how long it's been going and it was because a thunderstorm came through and it was lit by lightning and they reckon that in this region and up to Kalgoorlie over 20 fires were lit just because of lightning strikes which is just terrifying to think of isn't it? You know a storm comes through you think you're gonna get a bit of rain and instead you've got 20 fires setting things alive and it said that um, just that fire that we saw alone has burned through 12,000 hectares of land, which is just, it's incomprehensible, isn't it? Absolutely terrifying. Made loads of friends down here anyway, down this but seems the further you go away, everybody waves. Yeah. It's really good a little bit of <laughs> when, uh, when we were driving into Brema, literally. Oh, 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 watch, 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 watch me. Here, here's my mate, here, watch him, watch him, watch him. He didn't, he didn't wave! wave. <laughs> John got mugged. Oh, man. Oh, I need a stretch after that. We have finally made it to Esperance. It's now five o'clock. We left that beach this morning at nine o'clock. <laughs> so we've been in the car eight hours. Johnny boy's done all the driving. Thank you, darling. Go <laughs> get some food, eh? Yeah, we are ravenous. So <clears throat> all I've heard about Esperance is good things. Everybody I've spoke to said it's beautiful. It's a lovely place. We've been here 20 minutes mm -hmm. and I've already said loads of weirdos. <laughs> but John. We're parked up to this, next to this bloke in a Commodore. Holden Commodore. Holden Commodore, mm -hmm. this old jig. And he's in the, on his own, woolly out on. Just music going, just jamming to himself. We're a cockatoo in the car. <laughs> Sat on the passenger seat, just, little Corella. <laughs> just dancing with him. Let me show you him. Spending his Saturday night with his bird. Let me show you. Saturday might, night with his bird, John, get it? He might not be able to see him, but uh, he's a weirdo. He's not a weirdo, he's just hanging out with his pet at the foreshore. Weirdo. So, I've convinced Jess to go see the weirdo and his cockatoo. <laughs> so, if you don't see her again for the rest of the holiday, it's been you nice know knowing why. you. Yeah. Go put the rubbish in the bin and then it'll look a little bit less weird. <laughs> look at him go, look. Yeah, incoming. He's going to abduct it, I'm telling you. I'm back. He was a lovely bloke. He um, it was actually a little rescue 
cockatoo. Oh, right. He's got two others. They're all from car accidents that he saved. One's missing the bottom of its beak. That one can't fly. So, yeah. So really maybe, nice maybe he's not a weirdo. No, he's a really lovely man. Yeah. And nice chat to him about all the animals he's rescued and, yeah. Just wears a woolly hat in summer. <laughs> Our bellies are full. We've met a nice bird. And now we need to find somewhere to sleep for the night, hey boy? Good morning. Hello, hello. What a nightmare. <laughs> we haven't seen you for a couple of days. Yeah, so um, we had to get all editing done and all that sort of stuff and our laptop just had a big meltdown. Massive meltdown. So uh, we had to take it to a bloke in town and we um, have to have a look at it. But anyway, we got it sorted. So we're, uh, where are we? Conding up. Conding up, yeah. Uh, we're at, uh, it's a little free camp. Um, Massive footy oval and like off the oval, there's all parking for campers and that, and there's quite a few people here. Yeah, right? loads of people. So yeah, again, nice little spot. It's just but, outside of Esperance because all of the like best beaches around Esperance. There's a beautiful ocean drive. But all the best beaches around Esperance are in the Cape Le Grand National Park or Cape Barrett National Park. So um, yeah, we're on our way out there today. Got a few little jobs to finish off this morning, um, and then we'll go and check out these beaches and hopefully there'll be some sunshine. This one's a lovely little setup, look. So, the caravan, and it's got these real cool little two little sort of swag tents as well. Love that. <laughs> John, come on! We're going on the slide in a minute. Might be about to get bogged again. John thinks it'll be fine. Time for a bit of brekkie. Hopefully, by the time we've had some breakfast, the sun might fake its head out. beautiful little spot is Wharton Beach um, out in the Cape Le Grand National Park. It is spectacular. The sand is pure white. The water is not even just turquoise. It's like aquamarine. It's incredible. And if it was sunny, I'd just poof, we'd spend all day here. Um, but it's not. And we've been incredibly lucky with all of the weather we've had. So we've just had a beautiful little breakfast here and we're off to see some of the other spots around here. We've uh, developed a new condition. It's called... Gravel road phobia. <laughs> we're just following the sat nav and uh, it sent us down a gravel road and we both just looked at each other and went... I'll tell you what, if you ever come to Australia, you won't be able to cut, you can't wait to get to see these gravel roads and then you do about three and you wish you'd never see one ever again <laughs> in your life. This is a very good one so far yeah, though. She's been graded recently anyway. Yeah. So. Fingers crossed. This is Lucky Bay, and I think she definitely lives up to her name. She's had a beautiful swim, and there's been some kangaroos on the beach, and there's even these little guys just having a little afternoon snooze at the picnic benches. How great is that? Well, Peaceful Bay was beautiful. Oh my God, Lucky Bay. So uh, next stop is Hellfire Bay. And let's hope she doesn't quite live up to her name as much. Um, this one, I was just reading, it was called Lucky Bay when Matthew Flinders was charting like the coast of Australia uh, and he came here in 1802 
and he usually like tried to go away from the mainland out to the deeper seas during the night but because there's so many like rocky outcrops and little islands and stuff here in this archipelago it was too treacherous so they were desperate to find somewhere to stay for the night and they came in and found this lovely sandy bay and they stayed here for four days in the end well, that was lucky wasn't it it was really lucky so that's why they called it lucky bay and when the botanist like got off the boat to go and have a look around they took 130 samples of new plants from this area that were 100 of them completely new to science that was pretty cool see i'd tell you this information i know it too obviously he doesn't but, uh, but he I never thought... knows even where we are true <laughs> Well, old Hellfire Bay is a beauty as well. And sun's popped your head out. Yeah. Why is it called Hellfire Bay then? I don't know. I have no idea. If you don't know, the reason it was called Hellfire Bay was because it had a big fire here one day. And. You're just making it up. <laughs> You're so full of rubbish. So we just pulled up here at Bandy Creek Boat Harbour. We just, oh my god! We just came to take a nice little chill and have some food and that pulled up. And tell us what it is, Jess, a seal or sea lion? Sea lion. A sea lion, another one. But it was like a little pet. He it just come to the shore and yeah. Checked us out. Unbelievable. But uh, it's so deep out here though. Look, it's real shallow and then it literally just drops off a cliff. Yeah. So you can't go swimming or anything like that. Like the signs up yeah. and go swimming. But I reckon if you did, I reckon he'd be swimming with you, wouldn't yeah. he? That just and he just like popped up out of nowhere because it's like so deep it, it disappears and then he just pops up on the shore yeah. oh honestly I'm, i feel like it's all my birthdays at once yeah. oh. it's never ending <laughs> <laughs> just look at this so we didn't even mean to find this place and where else in the world can you do this it's Honestly, just unbelievable this trip just keeps blowing my socks off like i had this on my list as a place that we could maybe stop and have lunch or something we drive here we can drive onto the beach before you even start nobody here <laughs> nobody here and then a little sea lion pops yeah. his head up i just but if you've ever thought of coming to Australia, like I just can't highly recommend it enough because Jess lived there all her life and I lived there for four years and it still amazes us doing what we're doing now. So yeah, yeah. I can't I can't express how grateful I feel, how lucky I feel. Yeah, yeah just Just amazing. come and do it. Just come, come and do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna leave you here anyway. Uh, it's been a brilliant week again. Again. And um, yeah. Gonna head north. Yeah, we don't know how what far north yet. We don't know what we're gonna do, but um, I'm sure it's gonna be brilliant. So yeah, we'll see you in the next one. See you then.